Hello everyone, this is Wei Yang. In this paper, we present a vision-based system that enables reactive human-to-robot handovers of unknown objects. The ability to hand over objects to and from humans is critical for robots that are designed to assist people in different environments. For example, robots can bring convenience by fetching objects for humans at office or at home. They can also bring independence to older adults and people with mobility limitations at home by fetching various items for them, such as a cell phone or a medication bottle. In factories, robots can increase efficiency by handing off parts and tools to workers. One of the key challenges is the diversity of objects that the robots need to handle, especially in unstructured, personalized environments like homes. For example, Choi et al. conducted a study with ALS patients to identify a list of objects that are needed most on a daily basis to inform the design of the assistant robot. The list includes over 40 objects, from remote control, cell phones, utensils, to pillows, newspapers, and t-shirt, covering a wide range of sizes, shapes, appearances, and deformability. Even one type of object, such as mug, can vary drastically from one home to another. Therefore, generating grasps for different objects and ensuring the reactivity of the system while maintaining the safety during the human and robot interaction is extremely challenging. Despite the great efforts made by prior work on the human-to-robot handovers of unknown objects, the way to hold and present the object is restricted. Since the approach was open loop, the robot cannot adjust its trajectory once it starts to approach the hand, but developing a closed loop handover system is not trivial. It not only requires real time perception of human and the object, but also the smooth grasp and motion planning. Our previous work tried to improve the reactivity by incorporating the reactive task and motion planning. However, it could only handle cubes. It also relies on a predefined set of grasp poses, which limited how the user could hold the object. To overcome these limitations, we present a vision-based reactive human-to-robot handover system. Our system is able to take unknown objects with diverse shapes, sizes, appearances, and deformability from humans. The robot also adapts to various ways of holding objects. This is achieved by generating consistent grasps over time, given the partial observed point cloud of the object. For reactivity and the smoothness of the robot motion, we designed a closed-loop motion planning algorithm. Our system takes the RGBD images as input. The system first computes the point cloud from the depth image. Given the 3D human body tracking, the system crops a point cloud that only contains hand and object. Additionally, the system predicts a hand mask based on the RGB image through a hand segmentation neural network. This hand mask is further used to label the crop point cloud as either hand or object. Given the object point cloud, we use six dot grasp net to generate grasps. Finally, the system removes grasps that are colliding with the hand and selects the best grasp and executes the handover through reactive task planning. When deploying the perception model, which is pre-trained on offline datasets to the real-world applications, one big issue is the domain gap between the training data and the testing data. One of the most effective ways to tackle this issue is to fine-tune the pre-trained model on annotated data that are from the testing data distribution. But how could we get the annotations? In this paper, we reuse the idea of cropping the hand from the point cloud given body tracking, as demonstrated in these videos. Then, these ground shoes hand masks could be generated by projecting the hand point cloud into the RGB image frame. 
In this way, we can collect training data automatically without any manual annotation just in several minutes and refine the perception model very efficiently to different environments. Now we have the point cloud of the hand and the object in hand. We use SIGSTOF GraspNet to generate a diverse set of grasps. In particular, we use Grasp Sampler to generate a dense and diverse set of grasps conditioned on the object point cloud from a latent space. Then the Grasp Evaluator will give each grasp a confidence score. To generate temporarily consistent grasps for smooth robot motion, we randomly perturb the grasps from the previous frame and use Grasp Evaluator to score the perturbed grasps and keep those with high scores. Note that we remove all the grasps that are collided with a hand point cloud to avoid robot pinching human's hand. Next, Chris will introduce the reactive task planning. We represent the task of human to robot handover through four distinct phases. First, the robot will wait until the human arrives and presents to it an object. Next, it chooses an approach position and moves to this position along a collision free path. This involves grasp selection, choosing from all available grasps predicted by GraspNet to find the best possible grasp. Once it arrives at this approach position, it will make an open loop attempt to grasp. And finally, if it has successfully grasped the object, it will attempt to place it on the table. This is an example of the full system running. We can see both the, the view of the robot and with all predicted grass, as well as the chosen grass selected, and the segmentation and which step the robot is executing. Grass selection is of special note. Our goal is to reactively choose the best grasp in case the human moves, the object moves, or the distribution of predicted grass shifts. We do this via a cost function that is computed at every time step. First, we penalize grasps that have a lower score than a certain threshold. We also penalize grasps that are farther away from previously chosen grasps by a distance metric that balances between both a Cartesian and an orientation-based cost. Finally, we also penalize grasps that are far away from the home position. This prevents the robot's configuration from drifting too far into unreasonable areas. Once we have a chosen grasp, we find an inverse kinematic solution and attempt to find a path plan. If, this, if any step in this fails, we retry with the next lowest cost. We do a set of experiments to see how well our system will adapt in case of a changing orientation of the object. The first set of experiments, we rotated the object 45 degrees, and in the second set, we did a much more dramatic orientation shift of 90 degrees, which resulted in, which required much more adaptation for the robot to get to a reasonable grasp. While larger rotations required larger corrections and subsequently led to longer execution times, our approach successfully allows the system to adapt to changing object positions and orientations. Next, Maya will discuss the user study. We conducted a user study with six participants using a set of 26 household objects. The objects were chosen based on the study by Choi and colleagues mentioned earlier and varied in size, shape, function, and deformability. We split the objects into two subsets, A and B, and conducted three rounds of experiments with each participant. After all three rounds, participants were asked to fill a questionnaire with Likert scale and open-ended questions and describe any problems they experienced. For the first round, we asked participants to hand over 10 objects from the first set in a predefined order. The robot successfully grasped the objects from all participants while avoiding contact with the user's hand in all cases. We recorded the approach time, number of attempts, and success rate. Our system allowed the robot to take all objects in less than two trials on average. Certain objects such as spoon, pen, and mug took more trials for a successful grasp. Participants also reported in the questionnaire that these objects were more difficult to hand over. Our system had more difficulty with these objects due to the incomplete and noisy point cloud as a result of their smaller size or complex geometry. In the second round, participants were asked to choose five objects from the second set, 
which has 16 diverse objects, and hand it over to the robot one at a time. The robot succeeded in taking the wide range of objects chosen by participants across the different ways in which they presented them to the robot. In the last round, participants were allowed to choose any other objects that they brought with them or that they could find in the environment and hand it to the robot. You can see in these videos some of the objects that they chose. This part of the experiment demonstrated that our system has the ability to handle truly arbitrary objects that we had not tested it with before. In the questionnaire, we saw that most participants agreed or strongly agreed with statements like the robot was able to take arbitrary objects sufficiently, or the robot was aware of my actions. In open-ended questions, they commented that it was able to adapt its planned motion depending on the object in their hand and seemed to adjust to very different object geometries quite well. Some noted that the robot adapted the approach direction for objects that were highly asymmetric. Participants also noted that they felt safe during the experiment. One said, the robot is not going to pinch my hand. Lastly, participants noticed the reactivity of the handovers. One participant said, I held the objects in different orientations and often made adjustments in the middle of the robot's motion. The robot adjusted to these variations very fluidly. In conclusion, we present a human-to-robot handover system that is generalizable to diverse unknown objects. There is no hard constraint on how users might present an object to the robot, and the system is reactive to a user's movement. Thank you very much for your attention.